Madrid marks the move to Europe for the Global Champions League for the summer. It also marks an opportunity for those teams that are struggling to reboot their season. But how does that season look? Do the Hamburg Giants continue to pave the way forward? Or do the pre-season favourites come back into contention? We'll find out over the next 48 hours here on GCTV. Let's head to Madrid for the GCL. Madrid, the Spanish capital. Amazing history. Great food and a royal charm. A city of joy and life. Welcoming the world's best show jumpers. Join us for world-class action in the most stunning exclusive club. The Long Jeans Tour at Club de Campo Via de Madrid. From the 13th to the 15th of May. An elusive club. Welcome to the GCL and welcome to GCTV. It is the fourth event of the 2022 season as we head to this famous, beautiful ground in the heart of Spain. And thank you for taking time out this weekend to join us down this wonderful journey that is the 2022 season. Now, this provides an opportunity to reboot the season for so many. And that will be a talking point that I will bring up with Frederick de Bacca later on. It will be a talking point that I have no doubt will fold out throughout the rest of the weekend. For now though, before we head to Madrid, before we unpack all of the action that you can expect over the next two days, let's remind you as to what has brought us to this point in time, what has taken place thus far in the season. Let's wrap up the GCL for you up until this point. Hello and welcome to the 2022 Global Champions League season. It kicks off right here in Doha, Qatar on the Arabic Peninsula. For this 2022 season, Stockholm Hearts powered by HM. Stockholm Hearts win in Doha, Hamburg Giants come second, and Madrid in motion make it onto the podium. Welcome to Miami Beach, Global Champions League. Powered by HM with Olivier Philippard and Nicola Philippard. The winners from Doha sing to last place. What a uh, bad day at the office. Rolling Eagles with Ludger Beerbaum and Christian Kukuk. And Christian Kukuk is two fences away from writing history in Miami Beach. It's a win for Berlin Eagles. What a climax here in Miami Beach. Welcome to Mexico City for round two of Global Champions League. We are in the heart of the Mexican capital. Front rail goes. And a fault with the hind leg. Oh, and it's gone. Great result from Johnny Balls. Hamburg Giants. There's a little bit of tension there. And bless his home. Good run for uh, Bardes. Here comes feeling for the lead in Mexico City. And they do it. Hamburg Giants have won their first stage since Berlin 2019. Hamburg Giants are the winners. It has been a sensational turnaround from the Hamburg Giants that really are developing this incredible championship story as well because everyone thought Paris Panthers were a shoe-in. Stockholm Hearts, powered by H&M, were a shoe-in. Falcons of United, we know their title defence has started on shaky ground. But all of a sudden, Madrid in motion, Berlin Eagles, and now the Hamburg Giants are creating a new and perhaps slightly unexpected story for the 2022 season. Let's remind you, after the first three events of the year, just how things look. Your new championship leaders, the Hamburg Giants, just edging ahead of the Berlin Eagles. And as we said, Madrid Emotion in third. Santa Bay Pirates climbing nicely. And Stockholm Hearts, everybody's champions elect down to fifth now. Just in front of the Shanghai Swans and the London Knights with a very new look field team for 2022 down in eighth place. The bottom half of the table makes for some difficult reading for New York Empire in particular. For Falcons 
Hobart United, the champions beginning their title defense in rather poor form, but a good showing in Miami Beach and Mexico City, I beg your pardon, saw them climb up. And Paris Panthers have a lot that they need to try and turn around. They find themselves now in 14th position. And with some strengthening that took place during the offseason, bringing Ben Mayer in, still having so much talented in their riders, in their riders team, I beg your pardon, they expect a lot, lot more. But who then will go on to catch these men? Who then will go on to catch the Hamburg Giants who have made a rider change today? We will get a first look at Simon de Lestre later on today. We spoke about their rider depth. We spoke about the ability to give either Jur Freeling or Bart Bless the opportunity to rest. Well, Simon de Lestre will be out today and the Hamburg Giants, the championship leaders, will be second out the gate a little bit later on today. So we'll get a very early look at how the Hamburg Giants will go on to perform in Madrid this weekend. We caught up with Monayin Dani, the team manager of the Hamburg Giants. And as you can imagine, uh, well, he uh, we is wish, a very happy man. Uh, we were always in the lead, but uh, you dream of it. But uh, up to today, uh, they're making a good job. So uh, unexpected, but very happy. Could you describe like the, the success? Until now? Up to now we had a good, uh, good three shows. Uh, Doha was really good, came in second. Uh, Mexico, no, Miami was not maybe the best result, but we catch, uh, caught some points. And in Mexico they finished the job, so uh, third time was good. And here to continue. So we are back in Europe. What does it mean for, uh, for the team? Easier to travel, great shows, great venues, great atmosphere. Now with the COVID uh, restrictions being uh, more light. So uh, keep on scoring points, that's our main uh, goal. So can you say anything about the team aspirations uh, until now? Does it has changed? We have a new team this year. Uh, Simon de Les has come back. Uh, he was out last year, he could come back. We've got Bart and Jörg Freeling, who ride for the SFU question as well. Uh, very good riders, strong horses. Simon de Les, some very good, uh, a lot of experience. And we've got a good mix with Linda Heat from Sweden, Sarah Vinkerlova, young rider, and Sue Skelton as well. So we have a big variety, but I think a lot of horses uh, to fight for this season. So how is it for you to, to, to work as a manager for this team, to work all together with, uh, with the riders? We have a good team. They're very easy. They're all very good communicating, flexible in case we need to change some shows because we all have Nations Cups as well. And they also change uh, riders get injured, horse get injured. So uh, I'm very happy. It's an easy job. So what can you say, what can you tell us about this upcoming weekend? This upcoming weekend, we've got three very good riders. I think our three-star riders, Simon de Lester, Bart Bless and Jörg Freeling. We're coming here for the win. Trying to maintain that pole position in the league. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can make it happen. Huh? So you put pressure on the team? There's a lot of pressure now. We're at the top. We have to stay there. Can't, uh, you can't come down now. So we're going to try our best. So a little bit more about the horses and, and the riders. Uh, who do we see this weekend? Today we're going to see a little bit of a change. Normally I was put Bart Bless and Jörg Freeling uh, as main riders. But having Simon de Lester here, um, he's fit. His horse are fit. Had a good show in La Baal in the Nations Cup. So he's going to jump uh, today together with Bart Bless. We're going to see Cum Laude going in first. And then we're going to see uh, Tinkas for Simon de Lester. So I think we have a good chance to uh, start the weekend with a clear. Take a listen to the messaging from Monay and Danny from the Hamburg Giants and listen to the intent, listen to the targeting of the goals that the Hamburg Giants have set themselves going into the rest of the season because some of the points being made by him keep fighting for points, lots to fight for, flexibility needed, coming for the win and to maintain their lead. I feel that perhaps the Hamburg Giants before the season got underway would have been very satisfied with a strong performance throughout the season, get into the top four, get to Prague and all of a sudden now after good performance performances and coming into the championship lead. This messaging, this narrative, this Hamburg Giants story has started to move from one of let's see how well we can do to we expect to be the best. They will have to compete with the Stockholm Hearts powered by H&M. They will have to compete with the Paris Panthers. And it's where we find ourselves now with the Paris Panthers who have had somewhat of a stumble in the opening stages of the 2022 season. It has not been the performance from the Paris Panthers that many were expecting. Well, we were able to catch up with Harry Smolders who gave us his view on what has taken place thus far. There is always pressure. <laughs> No, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, we we, we, we want to go up in the standings. Uh, we definitely need uh, a, a top result, and uh, that's what we are aiming for. 
probably we, we didn't have the results we were hoping for so far. Um, I think we have a very strong team. Um, but OK, the season is long and uh, the horsepower will tell us at the end where our standings. There is no pressure from our team owner. Um, I think it's very important that our horses feel good. Um, and then I, uh, we, are, we are sure that the results will come. But we have to stay patient and wait till it's our turn. And this is a great show. Uh, like I said, I have great memories. I won the Grand Prix before here. Uh, we won the team class before here. So um, it's, it's always I'm always happy to come back to Madrid. The recurring theme has certainly been that there is no pressure on the Paris Panthers. It is a story that was shared with us as well by Rob Hoekstra during the recent episode of The Insider. The Paris Panthers seemingly are not feeling the pressure despite being way, way down the overall championship standings. Just a quick look at what the stadium, what the ring, what the arena looks like today in Madrid. It is absolutely beautiful, clear blue skies, perfect conditions for the best show jumping that we will always bring you here on GCTV. But it is not just Harry Smolders that is confident that the Paris Panthers will indeed bounce back. It is not just Harry Smolders that believes that there is not that much pressure on the Paris Panthers. Derek Kenny was on this week's episode of Team Talk and spoke to GCTV. Um, I had a disappointing second day in Mexico. Uh, I thought we were going to have a better result there. Um, and OK, we didn't do everything right in Miami, but we were close. Um, so I think we just have to keep fighting. You know, last year we ended up second in the league and we didn't start doing good until halfway through. So hopefully if we start doing that good now, then we can win the league. Uh, yeah, remarkable that you compared those two seasons because actually after three stages, you're even lower than last season. Yeah. Uh, any panic inside the team or... How do you, how do you feel I, think, about it? I think we we have a very good squad, mm -hmm. um, so I think you know it's all going to come together quite soon. And when it does come together, then it's going to be really good. Yeah. There is no denying that the Paris Panthers do indeed have a very good squad. There is no denying that they have sensational horsepower that any team on the starting list would be jealous to have. But it also talks about coming together at the right time and scoring when it matters most. And at the moment, despite having all what's available to them, it hasn't just clicked yet for the Paris Panthers. And perhaps this then, Madrid marking the return to Europe for the summer, could well be a potential reboot phase for the Paris Panthers and for so many other teams that have struggled in the opening stages of the 2022 season. Now, I believe that Frederick de Bakker is standing by for us at the uh, Madrid Arena. Frederick de Bakker, nice to hear from you. Good to see you in Madrid. Dara Kenny, Harris Smolders telling us that there is nothing to worry about, no pressure, no reason to panic. Is this the turning point for the Paris Panthers and for many other teams coming to Europe for the summer? Is this the opportunity to reboot the season for those in desperate need? Is it the turning point? No. Is it the opportunity? Yes. Um, but then they have to make use of that opportunity. And that's, of course, the question now. Um, for, for some teams, this is um, not the last opportunity, but it is a crucial one to make the best out of the season. And I know that we're only this is only the fourth stage into that season, but let's be realistic that, um, for example, Paris Panthers, they never set as low as they do now on the overall ranking. And that is um, that is an issue. Um, and they say they, they, they wave away the pressure, they laugh away the pressure, but still they have to produce the goods. Um, yes, they've got a team that is capable of, um, of winning stages, but the longer they wait with winning stages, the more that the other teams run away from them, literally. Um, it's already a 30 point, 34 point gap between them and the league leaders. It's 30 points for um, a win here in, uh, in Global Champions League. So it's um, already they have to fight their way back. They're not winning to um, take the lead in the championship. They're winning, they're trying to win to get back in the race for the championship. We see the course walk in front of us and we see so many wonderful faces returning to the GCL. The start list looks like a brand new competition, a facelift of sorts for the 2022 season. Would you be able to take us through just some of the exciting names that now either make a first or perhaps a new appearance for the GCL thus far? Yes, absolutely. Um, 
over over my shoulder I see uh, Anthony Condon uh, walk by Condon for Miami Celtics is actually an all Irish lineup for Miami Celtics Condon and Bertram Allen who makes his first um, appearance for the Celtics coming from Valkeswaard United there's Maurice Tabel who then joins Valkeswaard United um, alongside of uh, of Marcus Edding so um, Tabel is a new not a new face on the league but a new uh, new face for that team um, there's Brian Mogri Brian Mogri very exciting one uh, to follow for um, for Prague Lions and then there's of course a few of those riders that don't, that don't feature just yet on uh, on the teams I'm thinking um, for example of Yoli Mitlineu on, on Paris Panthers I'm thinking of Angelica Augustson Zanotelli on Madrid in Motion who is also exciting to follow and to watch to see how that team develop home team here of course that are doing really well on the overall championship sitting third in the championship at the moment so um, quite a lot of, of new faces if you look around Samuel Dahan Ken Stars I see um, on, on the other side of the ring I see Lily Keenan, Stockholm Hearts, powered by H&M. Lily Keenan straight away going into the team, so she will have to perform alongside Marlene Bayer Johnson. And if you start looking around, there's quite a lot of um, of new faces that um, are being thrown into the deep end or that can uh, can wait and sit it out um, and maybe come in for round two. And I think I'd take a look at the top three as well. Frederick Lloyd, the changes for the top three. No Luga Beerbaum. We mentioned Simon De Lestre. Changes for Madrid Emotion, as you mentioned. Are those type of changes, will that allow them to to still continue this upward curve or perhaps are they flirting with a little bit of trouble here? Um, on the contrary, actually, if you look at Berlin Eagles, they bring in Kobe with uh, with Philip Weishaupt, Checker with um, with Kukuk, it's always Dennis Lynch. What else? Always him. I think he's still a bit sour for finishing second in the Grand Prix uh, a few weeks ago, Dennis Lynch. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, Mark. It's just um, what do you want me to do? I, I'm, I'm always being bullied around. Anyway, um, Kukuk and Weishaupt. Kukuk with Checker, Weishaupt with uh, with Kobe. Strong team, if you ask me, with Kobe on on that team as well. With Checker also. Um, if you look at Hamburg Giants, bless with Cum Laude, very consistent. Um, you can't talk about consistency in terms of Simon de Lestre, but with that horse, he was uh, fourth in the five-star Grand Prix of Saint-Tropez Grimaud just uh, two weeks ago. So that's a combination in good form. So um, they they don't slack, they don't they don't rest. They've they've come here not with the idea. Okay, we're in the lead. We've got some points now. We can we can slow down. No, they've come here with uh, the ambition, like Muda and Dani already said, with the ambition to keep that uh, first place and maybe extend the lead if possible. Frederick, I see a lot of caps out, lots of bottled water, sunglasses. It looks as if it is a warm day in Madrid. Beautiful conditions there at the arena in the ring. Talk to us about where you are standing. What have you been able to catch an eye on? What is standing out for you? And what can we expect today in Madrid? Well, I've got a new cameraman. I, ho I hope that he wants to go down with me, Mr. Cameraman. Thank you very much. I'm always a fan of grass, as you know. Um, this is different grass than what we've seen in uh, in Mexico. As you can see, this is much more sandy. Um, but they haven't jumped on this grass since uh, September last year. No horse has been on this grass since September. They let it rest, um, let it re um, regain strength after a quite an intense season in 2021. It's not just launching Global Champions Tour and Global Champions League that they hold here at the Club Campo de Villa. Also some regional shows and national shows. Um, so it's a it's a fantastic ring. Keep in mind the slope. We are if we move over just a little bit um, here we are at the highest point of the arena. Just here, this is literally the highest point of the arena. And then to the sides it goes down in either way. So every time when you see a horse um, or a combination on top of the arena and they're always going downhill one way or the other. Just wondering um, if we Bertram Allen Bertram Allen. If you can join me, sorry. I, I, I know I have to let you go, but I just want to ask you a question. Um, what do you think? How do you look at the slope of the ring? Has um, the course designer played with the slope? Is there any line in particular you think that the slope could um, could affect? Yeah, I think maybe to the plank, uh, a little bit downhill, and then again downhill to the to the double. Um, so maybe for some of the lesser experienced horses, it could cause a problem. It's good to see you again. You're in a different kit. You're in a Miami Celtics kit. Where have you been all this time? We, we've been missing you. Yeah, I've been a bit quieter the last year or two with the Global, but um, no, it's nice to be back. And uh, I was here last year in Madrid. It's one of my favourites and uh, great to be here. And with a great horse, Pacino Amiro. He's in good form, no? Yeah, exactly. He's in good form and hopefully he likes the ring here. All right, I'll let you go. Um, let you get on with the, with the coursework, with the preparation. That's Bertram Allen for Miami Celtics, Mark.
Frederick, I'd like to talk to you more about the slope because we see so many challenges throughout the season for the 20, or for the GCL, for these riders. Give me that insight that we come to you for. Is that slope going to affect stride? Is it going to affect rhythm? How will these riders be challenged by that slope that is at, available at the Club Campo de Villa? Any normal distance on a, on a flat surface that you would walk, let's say, six strides. If it's uh, if it's downhill now, it becomes a short six. If it's uphill, it becomes a long six. So it's a lot of uh, of adjustability. What what um, uh, the course designer does really well here is um, playing with the slope. You you jump uphill, you land nearly um, uphill, but then it goes downhill again. So you really have to adjust all the time. It's a lot about um, about balance for these horses. Horses that have um, a difficulty with their stride, to keep their stride collected, or with their balance, they can't stay on their hind leg, they, they will kind of struggle. It's not dramatic. It's not, a, it's not a snowy mountain in the Alps, of course, but there is slope and it will have an effect, especially on those light, light uh, fences. And it's just that what Bertram Allen uh, explained. I don't know if we can turn around, if I can show you, but right there, the Caser Seguros um, vertical is on the downhill slope that walks as, um, as a six stride line. But um, actually on the downhill slope, that'll be um, quite, it walks a little bit longish, but if you ride it long as it is long, I think you'll find yourself way too close and ping uh, the plank off. And then it continues downhill to 9A and and, uh, and 9B, which is also slightly on the downhill slope, very delicate material, stripy uh, fences, 9A and 9B. So that's, um, that's, that's one of the places where the slope will affect riders and horses. And we'll see some faults there for sure. Absolutely. Frederick, let's focus on Hamburg Giants for just a few moments. The championship leaders, Bart Bless has been performing for quite some time. Simon de Lesser is a top rider, we know. Does this championship fairy tale continue for the Hamburg Giants now across the European legs? Or... Have they reached what they feel to be a decent enough point to now try and try out some new combinations? Where does the story go from here for the Hamburg Giants? Forward and upward, I think. Forward and upward, really. I think that um, as their horses, they've got a few young horses as well, as they continue to develop, they will come into play in the second part of the season. Um, now they've brought in Simon de Lestre with, um, with uh, Tinka's hero, uh, also Dexter Fontenay, who jumped one, actually, the earlier class, meter 45 class this afternoon. So it's only going better and better, I think, uh, for them. Now they've got the spread, now they've got the depth, um, they've got an extra rider to bring into the team. They can switch and, and swap around if they have to, with you feeling here on Long John Silver. So, no. Um, um, it's, it's bizarre because I was going through the story of the season and I, I wrote down for Doha, surprise from uh, Hamburg Giants. And then in Miami, they were sixth and you don't think about the Giants anymore. You know, there's, there's sixth and you, you think about the, the podium finishers and Paris Panthers that, that, that have that last fence down and finish way down below. And you don't think about the Giants and then they win out in, uh, in Miami and all of a sudden they're on top of the podium. You start looking at their depth of their horses and their riders and you think, wait a minute, this could be more than just um, a flash in a pan. And I think it, it's going to be more than a flash in the pan. I think they really have um, material to be top four contenders. Let's not talk championship, but they really have material to be top four contenders. I just certainly had that very positive messaging, great intent, real attacking mindset. All female lineup for Stockholm Hearts powered by H&M. Does Madrid give them the opportunity to wrestle themselves back into contention? Marlon Bayard Jonsson comes back in. Young Lily Keenan makes her appearance as well. Are we expecting big things from the what we believe to be champions elect a few weeks ago? Can Stockholm Hearts wrestle themselves back into contention? I believe so. H&M Indiana uh, with Marley Bayer Johnson, Argon, uh, fairly new horse for Lini Keenan. They also um, have got um, Agada van het Geredal here, then uh, Olivier Philippas with Legend and with the Blue Diamond. If you look on paper, that's a very strong team here, but I, I went through the list and there's a lot of strong teams here uh, with both horses and riders and the availability to, uh, to swap around. Um, that is maybe the only um, downside for Berlin Eagles that they only have two riders here should something go wrong, but for the rest there's a really strong lineup here in, uh, in Madrid and it's difficult to pick out uh, one team. I, I was making my, my, um, my infamous stars and asterisks behind the teams and all of a sudden I, I thought, well, it doesn't make any sense because I've given them all three stars. So 
let's just forget about the favourites here. Well, I really that, uh, think that we've got a very strong field here. Well, that means we have a, a really, really exciting day, or at least two days coming up over the next 48 hours. Frederick de Bakker putting a whole bunch of asterisks next to uh, a handful of teams does suggest that the competition is incredibly high. Before I let you go, Frederick de Bakker, Madrid in motion, home team. Always nice to put some spotlight on them. Again, Mark McCauley, Eduardo Alvarez Asnar, local Spanish rider, is today a chance for him to put in a strong performance cheer on by the home fans. Could today be the day Madrid Emotion have done well already? Um, you put me on the spot um, as they didn't get three asterisks behind their name. So by my feeling, I would say no. Sorry. Emotion. Perhaps. No, hey, don't, don't say sorry. It makes the competition exciting. We like that. We'll let you get into your commentary box. We look forward to watching the opening round of Global Champions League. Fred Tabaka, thank you very much for your time. He'll be in the commentary box in a few moments to bring you the English commentary of the GCL coming up in a few moments, as we said. The starting lineup as well makes for really interesting viewing too because the Rome Gladiators come out first. They will be Peter Clements and Fernando Martinez Soma, FMS. First time we see him in a couple of weeks' time. Your championship leaders, the Hamburg Giants, second out the gate. Remember, Simon de Lestre comes in to ride alongside Bart Bless. Shanghai Swans, changes for them as well. Catherine Ackerman stays, but Pierre Switzer comes into the side as well. Olivier Robert and Jérôme Guéry, saint -Tropez Pirates, two very experienced, strong, successful riders, will be fourth out the gate. Stockholm Hearts, the all-female lineup coming out fifth. Can Stars, Sami El Dahan, welcome back to the GCL for 2022. Always good to see Sami back in the mix. Prague Lions in seventh, and Paris Panthers, who have a lot to try and turn around, will be in eighth. We will take a halfway break, come back to studio, recap the day thus far, and give you some feedback as to what has taken place before we welcome the next set of eight teams to make their way out into the arena, onto that famous grass turf of the Club Campo de Villa here in Madrid. Stay with us on GCTV throughout the rest of the weekend as we bring you the best in show jumping. GCL round one today, GCL round two tomorrow, and of course, the LGCT Grand Prix of Madrid as well. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us for every single jump, every single time fault, and every single penalty here on the show. We come to you next, live from Madrid for Global Champions League round one.